The U.S. Embassy in Nairobi, one of the country's most secure locations, is perpetually thronged by hopeful applicants eagerly seeking visas. But don't be cheated by the aura of order and calmness. Right from the gate, you go through several checks before you face the interviewers. Every day, crowds flock to this consulate, yet only a handful of applicants successfully navigate the process, each parting with approximately 20 to 30,000 shillings. For some, this means depleting their entire life savings. Friday, the 9th of June 2023 was a normal day at the embassy. But a day that would also shine the spotlight to a sinister racket that has been going on for a long time. On this day, 15 Kenyan nationals walk into the embassy, disguised as government delegates, aiming to attend the UN high-level political forum in the New York. Unknowingly, a trap has been set up. Kenyans are struggling to get visas to the United States. And the key amongst this is that the process is, is, is tiresome. But now what shocked me is how are some people are able to get it so easily. KTN Investigates is collaborating with the whistleblower to bring the story to life. The whistleblower has asked us to hide his identity for security reasons. The UN High Level Political Forum HLPF in the New York had been slated for 10th to 19th January of 2023. The whistleblower tirelessly tracked the ongoing scam and progressively shared details with the security personnel at the visa section through email kenyafraudcrime at state.gov leading to the arrest of the perpetrators. When she was talking about people working to help her get the visa, they asked her how. And she told me that money has been paid. Money is paid directly from the United States to some organizations here in Kenya. And these organizations have got a good network with the uh, government uh, ministries, especially the Minister of Sports and Foreign Affairs, where once the money gets to this organization, it is distributed amongst these entities. And then they have characters at the embassy who now uh, manages the process inside there. The lady being referred to in the foregoing soundbite is Monica Mumbinjenga. And this marks the beginning of the game. So she told me that uh, when people pay into the tune of 4 million, and this money is, uh, once it is paid, you are assured of getting the visa because now you are considered as a government official. This investigation delves into the complex web of collusion implicating high government officials. <laughs> Through leaked document, we trace the involvement of Desnet, an organization that has infiltrated the government ministries. A document in our possession dated March 11, 2023, addressed to the consular section U.S. Embassy in Kenya, confirms the 23rd Annual Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC, Youth Forum was slated to take place over three days at the U.N. headquarters in New York. The forum will be under the ages of the 2023 high-level political forum and Monica Mumbinjenga is identified as an official from Desnet organization, a nominee by the State Department Youth Ministry to be part of the Kenya delegation participating. Our whistleblower at this point started following closely how normal Kenyans would be facilitated for visas as high-level delegates to the New York. The delegates had applied for the visa and the records were out that they were supposed to go for visa at the embassy at a specific time. At this point, the script would get murkier. <laughs> Just like any other visa interviews, they were taken through the tips on how to answer visa questions. The individuals were furnished with visa interview tips beforehand, as seen in this document. The document breaking down entire process from the beginning to the end. Our investigation pointed us to an organization named Desnet, which is a briefcase organization that claims to be having an office around Lavington, which we later realized it was not its official location. Their con operations take place in high-end venues like KICC and some government offices, the Treasury, the Ministry for Foreign Affairs, and the Ministry of Sports. There we have uh, people coming from different departments 
and of course we had uh, people coming from the other house the people are now organizing the actual tra uh, for those those ones are concerned with the issues of youth going for training going for sports and arts, arts related issues yeah now notice this section the applicants were coached that when prompted about their host in the new york they would state that it would be either ambassador martin kimani kenya's permanent representative to the united nations or la cesara stovia assistant secretary general for ecosol <laughs> with the necessary documents ktn investigates set out to verify if indeed it was true that important government ministries were being used to facilitate unauthorized individuals to fly to the united states of america we secured conversation between the u.s embassy in charge with the embassy security and the whistleblower the group was going for the high level new york forum not knowing that they were on the radar this list was the list of members who had corrupted their way to getting the as at the embassy at this moment the masterminds were making phone calls to their senior people in the government in order to assure them that they had communicated with the people at the embassy that everything was in order with this information we realized that one of the suspect was missing when the arrests were made at the embassy and suspects booked at gigiri police station this missing person is monica mumbinjenga who on the fateful day of the visa interview did not make it to the embassy we traced her to this location in Dindigwa, Georgia, at this executive salon. We disguised ourselves first as customers who needed service and that we had been referred to her by a friend who she plated her hair. Let's meet Monica Mumbe, a delegate from Desnet. <laughs> We used a lady to post as a client so as to easily access Monica and verify our findings. And this was the icebreaker.